Sedition Wars Battle for Alabaster is a horrific but fun tactical miniatures board game. In this video, we're going to explore some key concepts of gameplay. Every model in the game has a mobility score. This represents how many squares it can move each action. The Vanguard Samaritan has a mobility of 5, allowing it to move up to 5 squares. To make an attack, you add the modifier of the weapon to the result of 3d6. Sixes are called open dice, allowing for an additional die to be rolled. This roll, a total of 21, is then added to the weapon's modifier of 5. The total sum then gets compared to the target's defense. A revenant only has a defense of 12, so it's a hit. If an attack hits, the weapon always does damage, listed here as a base of 5. The number after the slash is the weapon's staging. This is added to the damage for every 6 rolled in the hit. As that we rolled 2 6s, an additional 4 damage is applied, for a total of 9. As that the revenant can only take 8 points of damage, it is blasted to pieces and removed from play. The remaining revenant also has a mobility of 5. It only needs to move 4 squares to get in close and make an attack against the Samaritan. His 3d6 results for an attack are a 4, 3, and a 3. Adding this to his Talons modifier of 3, he has a total of 13. Since the defense of the Vanguard Trooper is a 17, the attack fails to injure the Samaritan. As you may have realized, attacking, hitting, and damaging are all resolved in one die roll. This speeds everything up, but still maintains the great individuality and flavor of every unit. There are two modes in Sedition Wars, Active Mode and Reflex Mode. The player currently in Active Mode activates miniatures one by one until he has no actions left. However, if an action triggers an opponent's reflex action, this happens immediately, interrupting the active mode player and adding a new element to gameplay. Shown here, the Revenant only moves two squares before the Vanguard player reacts using the Samaritan's reflex fire ability. The Revenant stops moving while the Samaritan attacks, but a bad roll indicates a miss. Oh. The Revenant can then continue his action, moving up to attack and hitting him solidly. The Nano Cloud is a key resource for the Strain player and greatly feared by their opponents. Nano Cloud tokens have a mobility of six. One Nano Cloud token is placed next to a corpse counter, and two stop adjacent to the Strain Exorcist marker. The Nano Cloud infests the corpse, animating it. Both counters are removed, and a Revenant is put in its place. Exocysts can be used to create Phase 1 or Phase 2 strain. With two tokens in place, a Phase 2 Stalker can be placed, and the Nano Clouds removed. Exocysts, unlike corpse counters, are not removed, and can be used again later. The Nano Cloud can also be used to force the evolution of strain during play. In order to evolve a Stalker, a number of Nano Cloud tokens are moved adjacent to the Stalker equal to its evolution cost. Shown here as a 6, the evolution cost will then turn the Stalker into a Scythe Witch. Remove all of the nano counters and replace the old model with its new evolved form. Active mode players activate a squad's members one at a time, carrying out their actions accordingly. Each model can take two actions. They can move, attack, or even use a special ability if they have one.
Here we see a Samaritan move his mobility of 5 as his first action. Then using his second action, he attacks the stalker with his Saber Kinesis Carbine. Its modifier, plus the dice, must equal or exceed the stalker's defense of 16. A roll of 13 is a hit. With no open 6s rolled, the base damage of 5 is applied. This reduced the stalker's health to a 3 from its original 8. Marked here using a simple paperclip. Samaritan is done, so his next squad member gets to activate, which tries to perform as admirably as the first, moving up and taking a shot. A lower roll of 8 plus 5 for the weapon is not enough to hit the stalker's 16 defense, so this model is done as well, with no gain oh. as far as the battle's concerned. Lastly, the Vanguard Commander, Kara Black, is activated. Her mobility of 6 allows her to move into range as well. Running up, she makes a plasma beam attack. With a modifier of 6, Her roll, a 12 with one open 6, allowing for an additional die to come up another 5, making for a massive total of 23, a solid hit. This is just a taste of the great gameplay Battle for Alabaster has to offer. We've got a full 60 page rulebook detailing all the heroic vanguard units and the hideous strain. Also included, is the Outbreak Campaign, a series of linked scenarios that advance the story as the Vanguard attempt to contain the increasingly intelligent strain. It's deep, but super quick game, easy to learn, but hard to master. Feel free to leave your comments and questions below, and we'll answer them as best we can.